But I started my PhD in electrical engineering about three and a half years ago. And lately I've been doing some reflection about, was that the right decision? Should I have just gone a job after college? And I want to talk a little bit about that. And I also want to give you some advice on if you want to pursue graduate school, if you're thinking about that. Now, the first time I actually started thinking about doing a PhD was when I was at the NASA Kennedy Space Center. I was doing my second internship. And my mentor at the time said, hey, if you want to work on some interesting, really interesting problems, you should get a PhD. If you want to work on some interesting, some repetitive problems, you should just get a master's. I thought that was very good advice at the time. And um, it was actually very timely because when I was working there, we were uh, designing circuit boards. And basically our job was to design circuits and map different elements of the circuit to each other. The software is basically doing a lot of the work on its own. And I started thinking, huh, like, am I, if I, if I do this kind of work, am I going to get replaced? Is like a robot going to replace me? So that was another reason I started thinking about doing a PhD is because as a researcher, someone with a PhD, uh, you are somebody who has like intellectual and creative skills that are very hard to replace by a robot. So I thought, okay, maybe if I want job security, I probably should learn to become a researcher. And these were some of the more boring and realistic reasons. Uh, I had some idealistic reasons as well to why I pursued it. Like, uh, creating new knowledge and wanting to work on uh, s uh, futuristic and sci-fi type of technology. By the time I was graduating, I noticed in my university there was this young, uh, very smart uh, professor who was working on like brain machine interfaces and very high speed networks. And I thought, wow, these are very cool uh, topics, definitely a lot cooler than the stuff um, people are doing in the real world. And that person actually ended up becoming my PhD advisor. You have to be honest with yourself. Are you curious and do you like to learn? Um, if you're not somebody who loves learning and you're not curious about things and you don't like to dive deeper into the topics you're interested in, a PhD is gonna be very hard because a PhD by definition is teaching yourself to learn and get really deep into a certain topic that you find interesting. And you have to be self-motivated and self-sustained and that motivation has to come from your innate curiosity and drive. Now the other important thing is your PhD advisor. So a PhD is very different from undergrad and um, like a bachelor's or a master's. It's like in a bachelor's or a master's, you just take some classes and you pass some exams and you get the degree. But in a PhD, uh, you basically team up with a professor and you do research together on a certain topic and based on how much you contribute to the field that you're working on uh, decides whether you get your PhD or not. This is why a PhD could take as early as like two years uh, and as much as 10 years. It really just depends on how fast you get the, how, how fast you create knowledge that is worthy of being called an independent researcher. And I remember at the time I asked a lot of people for advice and my intuition was telling me, hey, just go for it. This seems like the right thing to do. And I did go for it and it's been um, crazy roller coaster uh, ride since then, but it's been amazing. And, and 3.5 years later, when I think about it, uh, it has been the single best decision I've ever made in my career. Because in those three and a half years, what I've been doing is I've been rewiring my brain to become an independent researcher, to become an independent problem solver, somebody who can tackle things independently. And what that has done is, of course, professionally, it's making me uh, have skills that are desirable for companies or whatnot. But more importantly, my self-image, the way I look at myself now, is very different from how I look at myself before the PhD. Uh, you know, before the PhD, as a struggling engineering student undergrad, you have, you're in the world of anxiety and you don't know what's going on and you don't really, uh, you're like, okay, am I an engineer? Do I belong in engineering? Why not? But once you make it far into a PhD program, uh, you have this self-image of, I'm independent, I can handle challenges, I love challenges and I love learning and I love solving problems. So it becomes kind of an identity that you are somebody who likes to go tackle things head on and make it happen. And don't get me wrong, there are times of self-doubt, there is imposter syndrome, these things are natural with every PhD student. But the idea is that doing the PhD has just changed how I look at myself and therefore how I look at the world. Where when I first joined the PhD, I'm like, oh, is this gonna help me get a job? Now I'm like, Forget the job, like now I have skills that are amazing. I don't, I may not even need a job. I could start my own company. I could do whatever I want now that I have the right skills on how to basically learn anything on my own. And that's the true value of the PhD, independent of any topic that you get. Now, one thing to keep in mind in doing a PhD is the financial opportunity cost. Um, so 
when I was graduating, I had job offers and some of them would pay up to like $100,000 a year um, compared to what I'm making as a PhD student, which is around like $30,000 a year. And that's a massive pay cut, especially if the PhD takes like five, six, seven years. That's something I must warn you of. Now for me, I'm very lucky in that um, I'm someone who does not need a lot of money to have a lot of fun. I mean, I'm single, I don't have kids, so that helps a lot. But also, um, like my biggest expenses are like books and travel. And travel nowadays is like really cheap. So I don't know, unless like you want a yacht or you want to like massively up, you upgrade your lifestyle, which nothing's wrong with that. But uh, if those are like your priorities, you probably should not do a PhD because you're, as a PhD student, you're gonna basically have enough money to survive and maybe like have some fun for like five years, give or take, for the average person. But the way I look at it is it's a form of delayed gratification, it's investment. You're investing in yourself and your own skills that sure, over the first five years of like your 20s, you may not make as much as your friend who got a full-time job. But 10 years later, 15 years later, 20 years later, uh, you could be doing something of much higher significance and earn a lot more money. So a PhD is definitely a long-term game. It's a long-term investment, which is why, again, in order for you to not burn out and maintain doing it, you have to really like learning. Now, one last important piece of advice I want to give, and this is not just about deciding on the PhD. This is anything in life. Uh, if you're uncertain, ask. Find people who have done what you're trying to do and ask them. For example, you can go and ask your professors or like you could leave a comment here and, and ask and because it's still a very small channel, I'm likely gonna answer you in detail. Whenever I've asked for something and people see that I have a burning desire to learn and I ask in a way that shows that I respect and value other people's time, um, most people would answer and would answer in detail and go out of their way uh, to give me insight. I remember prior to applying for the PhD, I asked many PhD students, many professors, I asked a lot of people and all the responses I got plus all the previous knowledge I had accumulated summed up to my intuition basically telling me hey I think this is what you should be doing and I agreed. So yeah to summarize three key ideas is one uh, to do a PhD you really have to be passionate and curious about learning you have to be a curious person. Two find the right program the right advisor because you'll basically be married to that person for like five years or so um, so it's very crucial you get along both in terms of technical interest and personality. Um, and then finally, uh, be willing to make a short-term financial sacrifice. Uh, but if you really enjoy the work and you're good at what you do in the long term, I think it will be definitely worth it. That being said, I will see you um, in the next video. Peace, love.